Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of The Six Sexy. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Sophia Anna. I post once a week about all things invisible illness, living with chronic pain, relationships, and so much more. This week on The Six Sexy, I'm tackling the subject of tricky hospital procedures. So I really wanted to sit down and have a candid conversation with you about my experience having to have MRI scans, what they are, how to get through them if you're claustrophobic and some of my tips on how I relax in the moment because they can be pretty scary if you're having it for the first time and I really just wanted to share my experience and my story with you. As always, if you liked this video, please hit a like on it, subscribe for more content and share some of that love around. Let's jump into the video. So for anyone that doesn't know, an MRI stands for a magnetic resonance imaging. Tain an MRI image, a patient is placed inside a very like long oblong magnetic, it's like a cylinder, a magnetic cylinder, and you have to remain super, super still during the process, otherwise the images um, don't come out correctly. I have an MRI scan every six months to monitor the iron deposits within my body. So because I have sickle cell um, disease, I have an overload of iron purely because I, I absorb it from my food and also I have um, too much iron from the blood that I have. So as a result of that, I have a very high, almost toxic amount of iron within my liver. And um, so they monitor that to make sure that I'm, you know, obviously not at risk of getting things like liver cirrhosis or liver cancer. And they also monitor my heart to ensure that there are no iron deposits within my heart. Now, the first time I had an MRI, it was the worst, excuse my swearing, but fucking experience of my life. Like I was not happy. I was not a happy chappy. It was, it was horrible. And it was horrible because, you know, I was young. They don't really explain to you what it's going to involve. They just get you to fill out a form that basically states whether you've had one before, whether you're claustrophobic, whether you have any stents um, within the body and, you know, a whole list of other questions that are required when you're going for a scan like that. And so you're not really prepared for it and the first time I had an MRI um, my mum came with me to the hospital and she actually asked if she could hold my feet while I was in it but obviously um, no one's allowed in the room with you because it could interfere with the magnetic field of the MRI machine and obviously distort the images so mum wasn't allowed in with me and I was terrified so they basically they lie you down um, and it's quite cold and it's it's like a long me metallic bed um, depending on what kind of scan you're having, if you're having a heart scan, they place something over your chest to hold you still and sometimes they strap you in and it can feel quite claustrophobic because you can't move your hands or your legs. There, You're given an emergency buzzer to press, so when you're inside the MRI, if you start to feel too panicked, because there's no one else around you, they can't hear you. So if you're saying, you know, help get me out of here, they're not going to be able to hear you. So you're given an emergency buzzer so you can press that and you'll come out. Having said that, once you uh, are laid down on the table, you obviously slide slowly into the MRI machine and um, you can be in there any time between 15 minutes to half an hour to 45 minutes. Sometimes if you're having like a brain scan, it can be longer. Um, I often have a liver scan and a heart scan at the same time and it's exhausting because even though it just sounds like you're lying there, you have to hold your breath. So I have to hold my breath at like 10 second intervals so that they can take specific pictures of my heart and how it's beating and whatever else. Um, obviously, I'm not, a, I'm not a doctor or a health professional, so I don't know all the technical terms. This is just my personal experience of having an MRI and basically how I get through it. So my number one tip, um, if you're having an MRI for the first time, is take someone with you that you trust. That could be your mum or your dad, your partner, a friend. Take someone with you because even though um, they're not allowed into the room with you, knowing that you have that support person in the waiting room is really, really beneficial and can sometimes ease you to go ahead with it. 
The second tip I have for you is to communicate with your nursing staff and the radiographers and the people that are placing you into the MRI machine. Be honest and upfront with them. Um, oftentimes, if you disclose that you're claustrophobic on the form, which I am, um, they will do everything in their power to make you as comfortable as possible. Sometimes they may offer you medication to make you drowsy during the procedure. Just be aware that you won't be able to drive if you choose to take that medication. Um, I have personally learned how to control my anxiety without um, needing a sedative. Uh, I wasn't always that way and I'm very proud to say that I can now have an MRI without freaking out about it and it's just a normal part of everyday life. So the biggest hurdle that I had to face in an MRI was dealing with like, so like when you're in an MRI, all you can see above you is like this white panel and that's the top of the MRI machine. So you're very, very close to that and it can often feel claustrophobic because you're closed in on both sides. It's very tubular. You don't have a lot of space to breathe and move. Um, it's kind of like being in a really enclosed tunnel. So it can feel very, very overwhelming when you're uh, going through an MRI for the first time. You're lying down and above you, all you're seeing is a tunnel. And it can feel very, you know, if you do have anxiety and you don't like being enclosed in spaces, um, it can feel very scary and you can feel like, um, you know, trapped, like you can't get out. So the best thing that I ever did in that situation was to learn to breathe. So be very conscious and aware of my breath and slowing my breath down so that I'm not hyperventilating and I'm not working myself up. So conscious breathing, be aware of that. Uh, the next best tip that I have is don't look up, close your eyes when you're in the MRI. Um, that really helped to pull my focus away from my surroundings. So closing my eyes allowed me to meditate and allowed me to uh, focus on something else rather than the fact that I was enclosed. And thirdly, which, you know, this is really important, um, is when you go into an MRI, always ask for earphones. Normally they supply it uh, for you. They supply you with a pair of headphones because um, something else that you're not prepared for is the really loud noises that are within the MRI. I have a friend joining me because he just wouldn't be quiet, would you? You wouldn't be quiet. Um, so when you're inside the MRI, uh, Something that I was never prepared for in the beginning was it's very, very loud. So you're gonna hear all sorts of noises while you're in there. I'll try and insert some sound effects for what an MRI sounds like. Uh, and it's, it's definitely something that takes getting used to, but having headphones over your ears allows you to distance from that a little bit and focus on something else. So oftentimes when I go in for an MRI, I'll say to the nursing staff, hey look, can I have a pair of headphones and can I listen to this radio station? And then that way they'll put the headphones on my ears and I'll go into the MRI kind of fully prepared and you know able to listen to the music rather than the loud noises. Having said that, the loud noises are very overwhelming and it's not like you're going to be able to truly listen to the music. It's really just a bit of a distraction to get you through it. But those have been the ways that I've been able to cope with an MRI. So closing your eyes, being aware of your breath, listening to music if you are given that option and really just reminding yourself that it's not forever it's it's a it's not the shortest test in the world but it's not the longest as well and it is non-invasive so um you know you're not going to be in pain you're not going to feel anything you're just going to have to lie very still and deal with some very not so pleasant noises <laughs> that's how i have coped with it um, the other thing that is really helpful when having an MRI is to, you know, have a plan in your day to do something nice afterwards. So make sure you reward yourself. Uh, the last MRI I had was actually yesterday and I had a super busy day. I had to um, drive into town and then have an MRI scan and then drive home and go to work. And I made sure that within that time period, I carved out 10 minutes for myself to go and um, grab a cup of coffee and a carrot cake. And it sounds really kind of, 
you know, simple and maybe a little bit stupid, but for me, carving out those moments of self-care really helped me to get through you know, tests that aren't pleasant and, you know, leave you with bad memories. So, you know, um, doing something pleasant for yourself and something, you know, to reward yourself for going through something like that can oftentimes take your mind away from it and also make you feel better in the moment. So when I was lying in the MRI, I was fantasizing about the cup of coffee I was going to have after. <laughs> so I hope these tips were beneficial for you guys. Um, please let me know in the comments below if you've ever had an MRI what your experience has been with them, um, you know, if you're claustrophobic and some of the tips that you use to deal with that. I'd also strongly recommend that um, if cognitive behavioral therapy is something that you've pursued with a psychologist, um, to speak with them about ways of coping with, um, you know, closed in spaces, if that's a huge fear or phobia of yours. Um, online meditation, YouTube has a lot of um, good meditative tips that can definitely help you to relax. So taking that into an MRI setting can be um, especially helpful. And talk to a friend, you know, let someone know how you're feeling. It's as I said, it's not easy the first time, but it definitely gets easier over time. So thank you so much for joining me on another episode of The Six Sexy. And until next time, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye.